there everybody how's it going nice to see you again i really want to get out and do some photography but the wind is just howling and uh, that's the way it goes we get a few days here every once in a while in the winter time where it is just nasty it's 35 degrees so it's not that that particularly that cold it's just that the wind's like steady 25 30 miles an hour with gusts to like 50 or 60 yeah, it, it just takes all the everything out of going out and photographing. But I'm at the point where I think I've got some final conclusions, for me anyway, on the K3 Mark III monochrome and the uh, Pentax system in general. Um, but mostly the K3 Mark III monochrome. I'm going to approach this uh, as far as image quality is concerned from three standpoints. So number one, there is the tonality. And there's no question that the monochrome sensor is definitely uh, in a vast improvement over a bare color sensor for black and white photography. Yeah, there's no question in my mind. If I were going to exclusively do or do a, a lot of digital black and white photography, I would definitely want to shoot a monochrome sensor uh, for the tonality. And um, uh, my test with the 8x10 film and uh, some of the other images that I've seen, the tonality is really great. It's much more accurate, etc., etc. Now, I'm not saying that you can't dial in a color bear sensor black and white image. Um, there are uh, controls on the Fujis that allow you to adjust the shadows and the highlights. And I've been playing with those more now because of the uh, K3 Mark III monochrome. So there's room for improvement in the color bearer sensor black and white images. But uh, right out of the gate, like the monochrome sensor is far superior. There's no question about it. Is it as good as film? Well, tonality wise, uh, it's close. OK, I think film still has the edge when you get it right. But, um, but uh, obviously convenience and, and speed and ease, et cetera, uh, is, uh, and cost are factors. So uh, tonality-wise, I'm going to say it's, uh, it's a winner for that. Next up is resolution. And the resolution of the uh, APS-C 26 megapixel sensor, it's about what you would expect from a K3 Mark III color sensor camera using pixel shift except you don't have to use pixel shift. Like every photograph is that sharp. So there is definitely an increase in resolution. So I think the resolution increase is about 30%. I saw that written somewhere else and I would uh, tend to agree with that. Uh, it feels like about 30% uh, resolution increase, which is about what you get with a K3 Mark III color sensor camera using pixel shift. It is, Similar to the K1 36 megapixel camera uh, in terms of uh, resolution in color versus black and white, etc. So, yeah, it's up there with the uh, definitely up there with the full frame cameras, the high resolution full frame cameras, 36, 45 megapixels, etc. So resolution wise, there is that. Now, where the rubber meets the road and the part that has me um, really hemming and hawing over the K3 Mark III is I uh, made some 13 by 19s of um, the images that I shot when I was testing the 8 by 10 versus the K3 Mark III. So there's one and there's the other. And tonality wise, they're hard to tell. The 8x10 is better, but sharpness wise, <laughs> there is no question about it. Hands down, the 8x10 image is just perfectly sharp. Whereas the uh, monochrome sensor digital camera, if when you get up on it, it starts breaking down. Now, if I didn't AB these, would I be perfectly happy with either print and could I sell them? Absolutely. So, um, but, but from an art standpoint, from a, from a, the best you can get standpoint from that look that you're looking for. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the difference between seeing a li a symphony live and listening to a CD of it. So, um, 
to help, maybe that helps people put that into perspective. So for me, the Holy Grail is still uh, eight by 10 film and then four by five film and then medium format film. And then I would go to digital and I don't care if it's medium format digital or full frame digital or APS-C digital, digital's digital. And uh, film is still the Holy Grail in, in terms of that nth degree of fine art sharpness. Um, resolution there's there's no, in my mind there's no question about it if you don't print your images then who cares shoot uh, use your phone <laughs> so uh yeah um but this is about the k3 mark III monochrome so the the winner is clearly film the k3 mark III monochrome is the winner in terms of uh, digital only cameras so uh it's uh the resolution is better it really is great uh, for for an APS-C sensor camera it's on par with the 45 megapixel full frames probably the 60 megapixel full frames it's that good and um, it's got the smoothness etc and so as far as image quality is concerned you know resolution and uh, tonality are where black and white uh, image quality resides and so for uh, tonality yes it's a clear winner over other color digital cameras and for resolution it's as good as the next level up, in my opinion, uh, of digital cameras, but it's nowhere near as good as film. So that, that helps, maybe helps put it into perspective for some people. Now, in terms of the K3 Mark III as a camera, well, the video specifications, and the reason I go into video specifications is because I have a YouTube channel. If you don't need video, if you're just a still shooter, then don't, don't worry about the video. Uh, it, the K3 Mark III monochrome has video. It's not even close to what like a Fuji X-T3 could do from five years ago. So, uh, so for my YouTube channel, it's, it's usable for like C-roll, if that makes any sense. And then as a stills camera, the K3 Mark III, now from a landscape photographer's perspective, the K3 Mark III in general, Again, just banging that drum one more time. It, where is the tilt screen? When you use the K3 Mark III monochrome, the tilt screen, the lack of a tilt screen in this day and age, now that almost every camera that you use has a tilt screen, really sticks out like a sore thumb. And what really adds insult to injury is that the live view mode on the K3 Mark III monochrome works really well, and you don't get it in the viewfinder. So... It makes reliance on the screen in the back even more so. So the tilt screen is really an omission. Any kind of, a, even the Sony, you know, A7R4 tilt screen that only goes in one direction or the Nikon tilt screen that only goes in one direction would be preferable to no tilt screen at all. Banged on that enough. And then um, the other thing is for me personally, the lack of the aspect ratios is a real problem. And it really hinders a camera that cries out for shooting square for minimalism, black and white, minimalist black and white, or uh, at five, four by five, you know, it, it really could use some aspect ratios. Those two things, and it would be a real winner for a landscape camera. As it is now, it's kind of a pain. Okay, but, uh, but that sensor, the black and white monochrome sensor is really, really something different than a color sensor camera as far as the full system is concerned from a stills photography perspective if you want to you can do anything you want to do with the uh, pentax system the k1 mark ii is an absolute pleasure of a camera to use the image quality is probably better than the modern cameras just because it's less processed um, every camera iteration they seem to be upping the processing and every year that soft that demosaicing becomes more and more uh, intensive. And uh, it really was kind of interesting to me to go back to the K1 Mark II and shoot it for a while and realize like how over-processed the new demosaicing for the newer cameras is getting. It, it's hard to get a flat neutral image with the, I mean, the new cameras are starting to look CGI. So um, yeah, digital has that problem that it could fall into that trap. So the uh, images out of the K1 Mark II were very natural looking and very impressive. Uh, the only camera company that has better colors than Fuji is Pentax, in my opinion. 
And a lot of that is down to the lenses. They're very colorful, et cetera, or not to get off on a tangent there. But, um, but yeah, the Pentax system from a stills photography perspective really can't be beat. And from an art photography perspective, landscape photography perspective, I really love the SLR viewfinder, the digital SLR viewfinder. The clear view of what's happening it just can't be replicated with an electronic viewfinder. But uh, having said that, um, the electronic viewfinder works, right? Uh, so, and it gives you information. It's six of one half dozen of another. I've said that before. The problem with the whole system for me uh, is that in order to feel just one system, I'm stuck with the Pentax system. And there's a lot of things the Pentax system doesn't do for me personally that my basic Fuji kit does. So uh, because I run a YouTube channel on top of the art that I do, um, I need to have cameras that do decent video as well. Again, it comes back to the size, the weight, the cost, the performance, and what I, my specific needs set. At the end of the day, I, I've been trying to beat my Fuji system for now five years now. And every time I try, it, I try different things. It just doesn't work out. The Fujis just cover all the bases and they do it really well. Uh, arguably the Fuji uh, X-T5, X-T3, X-H2 are still some of the best video cameras out there. Okay. And then, um, and then for stills photography, the color work, I have no problems with it. The black and white work, if you tweak it, I'm sure I can get really close. The K3 Mark III monochrome, it's not the same thing. I get that. And the, the appeal and the allure of the K3 Mark III monochrome is really strong. But the sacrifices that I have to make in order to implement and field that camera uh, just aren't worth it for me. And that's the bottom line. So this experiment is coming to an end. Uh, I'm packing it all up and sending it all back. Uh, the other side of the coin is I just really can't afford to invest that kind of money and still have the Fujis um, so, and have a complete redundant Pentax kit it just gets, it starts getting out of control. Um, I've thought about just using the Pentax K3 Mark III monochrome, but the bottom line comes down to when I head out into the field, what am I throwing in the bag? And, um, you know, just for that one little niche aspect of black and white, uh, I need a whole different set of lenses and another camera body. And it, the weight adds up, not to mention the expense. So, yeah, the, I, I just wouldn't, I know myself, I just wouldn't do it, okay? If I'm going to go through all, all that trouble, here's the answer. I'd rather, okay, what would you rather? I'd rather bring my X-T5, my X-H2 as my basic kit, go out, photograph, find a composition that's worthy of shooting on 8x10 or 4x5, go back to the truck, get the 4x5 or the 8x10, and go shoot film for the ultimate in fine art, black and white landscape photography. And that's what works for me. If you made the decision that, you know, you, you're you going to have the uh, X-H2 in your bag and then a couple of prime lenses for the K3 Mark III monochrome, I could fully support that. Like, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the K3 Mark III monochrome. There's a lot of things right with it. But, you know, now, if now, so what if... Pentax had actually put decent video in the K3 Mark III monochrome? What if it was even competitive? What if there wasn't the crop? What if there was actually autofocus during video? Okay, what if it, what if it was as good as the X-T3, let's say, from five years ago? That'd be a whole different story, okay? But, but you know, because then it, the, the, it's a balancing act, right? You know, Pentax is here and, and Fuji's here. And, you know, I, I tried Nikon, that got to there. I tried Sony, that got to there. Fuji is still, overall, the better digital system for me in the work that I do. And uh, that, but that includes 4x5 film, 8x10 film, which I really love and really enjoy. And it, it's really what I want to do. It's what brings me joy. 
And that, that's what this is all about, right? So tough decision, it really is. I mean, Pentax, as, as goofy of a company as it is, they really make some really interesting things. And if I had the money to be a collector, uh, I would love to have a K3 Mark III monochrome and the DA Primes and just keep it in the bag. And, you know, four times a year when I felt like going out shooting it, I would grab it, right? I don't have that luxury, so unfortunately. So there it is. This is my final conclusions on the K3 Mark III monochrome. I know it's going to disappoint a lot of people because they wanted to see me uh, photograph with it. But uh, you'll get to see me photograph with 4x5 and 8x10 for black and white. And uh, also, I'm going to invest some time and energy into the black and white conversions, uh, the, the black and white um, film conversions on the um, uh, X-T5 and X-H2. And uh, I've been experimenting with it already, and I got some interesting stuff that uh, that you know I think is uh, is acceptable so there it is it's still digital if I really want you know if I get a shot with um, with the X-T5 or the X-H2 and it's black and white and it's really great I can go back and shoot it with uh, the 4x5 and then it's locked in right so that's my thinking on the whole thing um, great cameras just just can't beat my Fujis is really what it comes down to. And as I said, when I went into this whole thing to begin with, I bought the stuff from B&H, checked it out if it, with the full intentions of keeping it, if it fulfilled uh, what I needed to do. Uh, at the end of the line, after uh, six weeks of um, intensive study and thinking about it and sleepless nights, I have to say, you know, it was fun to play with. It was fun to to see what it could do, to quantify it, to see what it could do for me, etc. And uh, but unfortunately, uh, it's hard to beat the Fujis. It just really is. And uh, I think that's why there are some people that really dislike Fuji so much, because uh, they really do make a better mousetrap. So there it is. Thanks for watching. Sorry, this is in inside indoors. Uh, like I said, I would have really liked to have gone out and photographed and made this video while I was photographing, but that's not happening. And the the, um, the weather forecast for the next, like, till Sunday, I think, and it's only Thursday now, is just high winds all the time until then. So anyway, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you out there when the wind dies down. Have a great one. Bye.